and welcome to the Knitting Game and Other Stuff. This is episode 41 for November 14th, 2012. Um, hi everybody and welcome. Uh, if you're new to the group, I hope you enjoy and you come back again. And thank you for joining me. And if you've been with me before, thank you for coming back. It really means a lot. Um, I have a huge show today. Um, not announcement wise, but I think length wise, what I've been trying to keep down to half an hour, my, you have no idea. I have a smorgasbord just laid out in front of me today. I'm so, I've been busy. So, uh, let's get right started. Uh, if you'd like to keep in touch with me, uh, and find out how to friend me on Plurk and watch the show, um, Get in touch with me on Ravelry and on Twitter, Pinterest, Plurk, Google Plus, and link to the Knitting Game group. Uh, you can see the show notes and all the other goodies there at myordinaryjourney.com, and that's all one word. That is my blog, so you can have some fun there. So, speaking of the Ravelry group, I had a banner week this week. Um, I think I closed the group today at about 127 folks. So, we are closing in on that 150 person milestone. So, once we get there, there's I'm going to have a giveaway. I'll have something. So, I want to say hello and thank you to all the wonderful folks that joined the group this week. So we've got um, Ellen Missy, 2005, and that's Missy. Uh, Mahudak, that's Nancy. NJ Knitter, Vicky. Lollipop Yarn, Joan. And if you don't know, she's one of the dyers for the A of Three Sock Club, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, Jill Shoke, Jill. Deb C. Quilt, Deb. Izzy N., that's Izzy, Meredith O., Meredith, Fire Medic, no first name, but hello, and Nana's Bug, that's Laura, and Homemade Knitting, and that is Sarah. So everybody, thank you for joining the group this week, and I hope you guys can have tons of fun. Um, we only have one birthday this week coming up, and that is Spun Too Tight. Ashley, happy birthday. Coming up. All right, so some shout-outs this week. Um, Inked Knits, another one of the AF3 dyers, has a 15% off coupon code from now to the end of the year for Knitting Game viewers. And that code at checkout is knit game, all one word and all lowercase. And if you need to see it again, check out the show notes. Um, they're on the blog. Um, so I mentioned two of the dyers from the Armed Forces Fiber Fanatics Charity Sock Yarn Club, or AF3 for short. Let me tell you guys a little bit about what's going on. Um, last week I announced the club and we are currently in the process of taking uh, lottery signups. There are 29 slots first and foremost. So we've gotten a really great response. Um, the dyers that are lined up for the club are Lollipop Yarns, Fiber Nymph Dye Works, Inked Knits, Another Crafty Girl, and um, Diabolical. So, and not in that order, so surprise, surprise. So, I've lined up these five dyers, and they're helping me out with a charity uh, fund drive. And how it works is the yarn will retail for club members from $21 to $29, a uh, hank or a ball, depending, because Lollipop, she likes she does hers in the balls so um, each month club members will get shipped a single skein from one of each of the well, one of the dyers so for example uh, say in I don't know January which is the first month of the club that's the first month of the club ship 
say Lollipop was the dyer for that month, you would get one ball of her yarn. So all in all, you'd get five skeins over the course of five months from the five dyers for a total of five. Um, in the initial press release, it was, I was a little worried that it may confuse some folks, so I went ahead and full disclosure, you get one skein a month for five months. That's how it works, in case you're wondering. So right now, you can sign up for the lottery, and I'll pull the names next Wednesday, the 21st. Actually, I'll probably, I will probably pull the names on Thursday, since that's Thanksgiving. I'll pull the names on Thursday and send out emails on Thursday, because that way I can close the thread, close the, the signups right at midnight. So I give everybody the longest amount possible to sign up. So um, the 21st at midnight, my time, Eastern time, is when I'm going to stop the signups. And um, I'll go ahead and... Uh, Pull names for the 29 slots and everybody should get an email by um, Thursday after they get to eat all their turkey if they're here in the United States and participate in Thanksgiving. So that's something else coming up. We've got global turkey time coming up next week, everybody, already. I, it was just Halloween yesterday. I don't know what's going on. All right. So, yes, if... Oh, and the proceeds, I forgot to say, the proceeds from the Sock Club uh, will be evenly distributed between the Wounded Warrior Project and the USO. So you're benefiting um, both current and possibly prior service if they're out. But um, yes, uh, two very causes that are close to my heart. Being a veteran, I wanted to help the veterans and the active service uh, members a little bit so that's why I announced the club last week and yeah so in honor of Veterans Day by the way did you have a good Veterans Day good question speaking of questions wow look at those segues I'm, I'm doing good this week and rolling along um, the question of the week was actually posed to me uh, by one of the viewers of the show and the what would you like to know about me thread on the board and the question is is fruitcake good or evil so um, my answer to this question is and I had to write this down because I had to think about this one if you ask my husband it is good I've already bought him a few fruit cakes this year already. He eats them every year. I, however, try it every year thinking that it will be better because I want to like it. I do. I really want to like fruit cake. I really like the idea of fruit cake, but it never is. I just, I don't have a taste for it. It's just, it's not my thing. So I want it to be good, but it's really not. No. So. And then um, I did get another question this week that I liked on the board, and it is, um, what books do I like to read? And that's an interesting question, too, because I don't really read anymore. I hate to say that, but I don't. I All my free time, I'm knitting or sewing or spinning or watching TV. If I read a book, it's in the car, listening to it through an audiobook, but I haven't even done that in forever. So, but when I do read and or listen to books, I kind of like spy detective action thrillers, um, like the Bourne books or, um, oh, Alex Cross books, those kind of things. So, there you go. All right, so on to the knitting game while everybody's here. Um, this go around of the knitting game, I'm doing one plus one. Scarves, shawls, and shrugs, 25 plus projects for just two skeins of yarn. So it's a kind of a departure from the one skein wonders. This time it takes two. And the two are usually combined in interesting and unique ways to uh, really showcase the yarns. And it's a bit of a design element as well. So last week um, we had the first round. And it was between the exotic draped ruffle and the um, Japo collar, the romantic, I, 
Japout collar. Um, so with 67% of the vote, the winner of the round one of the one plus one is the exotic draped ruffle. Okay, so moving on to round two, um, the exotic draped ruffle will go up against the Taj Mahal scarf. So some particulars about the drape ruffle. First of all, it takes a DK weight yarn and it's knit on US size 9 or 5.5 millimeter needles and it takes about 277 yards of yarn. And the Taj Mahal scarf, that is also a DK weight yarn, but this time knit on size 8 needles, and it takes about 272 yards of yarn. So these two particular scarves are very close in yardage and yarn weight and needle size. So they're very comparable to what you might have in your stash. So some updates. I've been working on a lot of projects lately, so I'm glad I have some updates. We'll start with the easy 100th anniversary half circle camping shawl. So um, I picked the yarn, I dyed the yarn, I cast on the yarn, and where I'm at right now, I'm in the middle of the second motif so these are called the slanting twigs and I don't know if you can see it here at the top. I've had some issues with the pattern and the issues are all mine. Um, I'm trying to knit on the go with children and sometimes it doesn't work. So I was like a stitch off or something in one of the previous three rounds. I'm back on track. I'm not going to tink back because I think overall it's not going to be that noticeable. Um, the overall effect, you still get it. You still see that it's these slanting little twig things here. Um, so I'm not going to fret. I'm just going to keep calm and knit on because that is what I do. Um, I'm still shooting for completion date on Thanksgiving, so we'll see how that goes. I am working only half days next week because traffic around here gets ridiculous. It's just absolutely horrendous because everybody is commuting to where they need to go for Thanksgiving. And as the week progresses, as it gets closer to Thursday, the traffic gets more and more horrible. So I go into work at five, I'm at work at 5.30 in the morning and I'm only working a half day, so I'm leaving between 9.30 and 10.30 in the morning and that's gonna be it because I am not going to sit in traffic for three or four hours a day just to get home. Um, my sanity, I need it, so I will keep it. But that's going to afford me some extra time with my knitting that I wouldn't normally yet so I am hoping to knock that out and have it done and possibly blocking on Thanksgiving Day we'll see so moving on the glass house hat the glass hood hat um, everybody voted and they said that they wanted to see the hat knit with um, hand spun yarn so I have this this is wool gatherings merino that I spun myself. It is Navajo plied, chain plied, and it is about a sport weight. Um, it actually might be a little bit heavier now. It might be a little thicker. It might be closer to a DK weight now, or maybe even a worsted weight in some spots because I washed it and I whacked it. So it kind of puffed up on me a little bit more than I was expecting. But you know what? I'm just going to roll with it because um, I have a different yarn picked out for the brim. I only had 300 yards of this, which the pattern calls for 318. 
So to make sure that I have enough, I'm actually um, knitting the brim, and as you can see, they kind of they complement each other very well. I'm knitting the brim of the hat. This is Knit Picks palette in a really interesting pink colorway that I happen to have in my stash, and it goes very well with the um, hand spun. And I'm holding it double. Now, I know that makes it a DK weight and it's supposed to be a sport weight, but I think even though I'm holding it double, it um, it's coming out fairly well. So right now, I'm just working on the ribbing. I just started that over the weekend, I think Sunday night, and I worked on it Monday morning at the gym while I was waiting for my husband to finish up after my workout. So I'm making progress, so that's good. And that's all I have for the knitting game. So now we're going to move on to the other stuff. But before we do, for round two, voting for round two will close on or about 3 p.m. Eastern Time on the 21st. So um, I will, might close a little bit earlier, noon, but I always announce and, and give folks the opportunity, a reminder to go ahead and vote. So I will do that, but just be aware, I might get a little skippy and want to record a little bit earlier than 6 o'clock in the evening. So, moving on to other stuff, and the first other stuff is knitting. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So, it has been a busy week with knitting, too, because not only have I been working on my knitting game projects, um, I have been working on some other projects. So first, I'm going to do my works in progress first because I have a special thing to show at the end because I do have another finished object. I can't believe it. It's amazing. So I'm going to start off. These are my Augusta Fingerless Mitts. And this is a free pattern on Ravelry and it is just the cutest little faux cable gauntlet. And I am knitting these with size 6 uh, US, and they're knit picks. And I'm in the middle of a round, so that's why it's a little wonky. But if you can see, it's a little faux cable pattern. It's wonderful, and it's fast, and it's so easy to memorize. Um, you may have noticed I have a big gaping hole, but it's supposed to be there. I was um, able to drop these stitches off for the thumb gusset. For the thumb hole so when I finish the top of the mitt and do some ribbing up at the top um, I will pick up the stitches around here and do a little bit of a thumb so this is the first one so this is kind of a hoe but not really it's a work in progress still so um, this is going really good but I can only work on this when my daughter is nowhere around because it's a surprise and if she sees me working on it and I guess if she watched the podcast, she would know that I'm working on it, but I don't even think she watches. So <laughs> knitting is not her thing, but uh, yeah, I'm knitting this with, uh, this is hand spun. This is um, Gnome Acres uh, Falkland in the Loki colorway. So I'm working from the center. So I've got some blue and some yellow to go, and you can see it transitions. So they're going to be fraternal twin fingerless mitts. They're not going to be matching. Um, I did spin the yarn fractally. So I had one braid that I just spun from beginning to end, and then I had another braid that I pulled apart and spun... Um, in sections so there would be some color repeats but even though I still have some really long ones so as you can see here it's blue and blue yellow and blue up here towards the top and it's very subtle there's a little section that's green and blue and now it's gone back to kind of like the yellow and blue so I'm gonna do that and then to go with that I'm going to make her a hat because um, I have like almost 800 yards of this yarn so what I was thinking about doing is taking what was left over and plying it again with itself to make a thicker, um, closer to a worsted weight yarn so I could do a matching hat and it would be a four ply instead of just a two ply. So that's what I've been thinking. 
The other project that I have that I'm working on, it is a chemo hat for a friend of mine up at work, his wife. So I'm working, um, her favorite color is red. So I've already knit a cool house hat by Jared Flood. And I just really love this pattern so much that I'm doing this instead of um, a variegated yarn, I'm doing it in a solid. And this is the Brava Worsted. It's 100% acrylic yarn from Knit Picks. Um, and there's one cable in here. I don't know if I got distracted or what I have to find. I don't know if you guys can see that right there, but I forgot to cross the cables. Don't ask me. I don't know what I was doing. So it just kind of looks like two waves that bounce off each other. They don't actually cross. So hopefully nobody will notice that. And I'm sure if I don't point it out, nobody will. So we're just going to keep on trucking. I didn't even notice it until I was way down the line. So no tinking back on that one. So um, my finished object is another cowl and um, it is a refinement I guess of the cowl I showed last week. I added some different features, um, some ribbing because I wasn't thrilled with how it was rolling up on itself but oh my goodness did I go to town. So here is the cowl and I did write up the pattern I am looking for test knitters if you would like a quick and easy cowl to do. I'm calling it the Three Willows Cowl. And as you can see, it's it's very large and it's knit with bulky yarn. It took me about a day to do from start to finish, not even 24 hours because of course I had to sleep. But it's using that same elongated twisted knit stitch that I really, really love. And it gives it an open and airiness, and yet when you put it around your neck, it just bulks up so wonderfully. And again, you just kinda toss it around, and there you go. It is such a wonderful knit to knit. It's quick, and this one, because it is so big, you can stretch it out and get it, manipulate it. You could almost use it as a capillet around your shoulders. Um, but yeah, and you can use like little shawl pins to keep it all together. I love it. So if you're interested in test knitting it, um, yeah, hit me up and feel free, have fun with it. Um, what I used to knit this one was the Cascade Yarn Pacific Chunky, and this is color 33, which is actually cactus. I looked these up before recording. And it is 60% acrylic and 40% superwash merino wool. So this is washable. It is so soft. I am really surprised. It feels like the softest wool ever. You would never, this is some really nice yarn for acrylic. I'm really happy and it doesn't, like the Brava I noticed kind of sheds or kind of gets fluffy and there's a little halo to it and a little pulls apart a little bit but not this stuff so this is really neat stuff so that's that um so another finished object yay for me so oh, here we go i need a stylist to put it on for me Alrighty, so as you can tell, I got some new yarn because this is not something I had in my stash just to pull from. So I went to the local yarn shop on Saturday just to hang out with the girls and to do some knitting. And I picked up this yarn because it was, it was fairly inexpensive. It was very reasonably priced. I picked up two skeins. Each skein has um, 120 yards. So, you know, it's a nice bulky yarn. Um, she did have some on sale too. So I picked up what she had on sale because they were single skeins. And it is really neat because I want to use some color work. So this is, again, the Cascade Yarn Pacific Chunky. 
and I got it in the peacock colorway so this turquoisey color and then the pewter which is this gray color and then this it's um, called taupe it really is kind of brownish but it's a brownish gray so I think they look really wonderful together I don't know what I'll do with them um, maybe a scarf maybe a hat um, if I do another cowl, it won't be one like this because I want to do color work. And you've got to be kind of creative when you're weaving your ends on these because it is so open. So that's the only, you kind of have to fiddle with it to get your ends woven in. And I don't want to have a lot of ends with color work or, you know, carrying it up the sides or something. Because this is just knitting around. Um, so pretty easy. So I got that from my local yarn store. Then I hit uh, Gnome Acres update the other day last Friday and I scored some Aurora Gnome Alice. Yay! So um, I am really digging the purple, green, all the Aurora Borealis, Aurora Gnome Alice, all of the dyers. It seems like I'm on this Alaska kick so I picked up some Aurora Borealis from, um, uh, oh, Unwind Yarn Company and Fiber, and it's a Polworth, and it's beautiful, and I'm spinning that up right now. Um, and then Into the World had an, an Aurora Borealis just recently. I think September was their club fiber for that. Maybe October. September. September was Aurora Borealis and it was beautiful. So, and then um, Gnome Acres with her Aurora Gnome Alice. Beautiful stuff. This is not the sparkle though, and that was my fault. If I had realized what I had grabbed, because man, I was hitting F5, I wanted to score this so bad. And I picked the first one that popped up on her board, on her shop, not even realizing that it wasn't the sparkle, because I would have preferred the sparkly kind, but this is just, it, it's beautiful, even without the sparkles. So it really does look so much like it. It just blows me away. So that was the um, Aurora Normiales. I also picked up the Arthur, um, Excuse me, the uh, Arthur we Wesley, Weasley. Oh, I knew it. I'm like, I'm not saying that right. Sorry. I'm sorry for all you Harry Potter folks out there. I said it wrong. I haven't read the books. I'm sorry. I like the movies. But I love this deep, deep maroonish red with this green, this kind of like pale yellowy green and this cream color. I want to make mittens out of this. So that's why I bought this. I've been eyeballing this for a while and I finally decided I was going to pick it up. So that's what I got from Gnome Acres this week. So I picked that up on Friday. Well then, on Lollipop Yarns update the other day, a while back, her last update, um, I was stocking that update too. And yes, I did hit F5 about a gazillion times and I picked up Devil with a blue dress on because blue is my favorite color and these blues are about as close as you can get to my favorite blues so I have some self striping blue socks in my future and it is not gonna have me singing the blues but it's good stuff so the card let me get the card so this is devil with a blue dress it is six rows of naughty navy and six rows of bodacious blue. So, and I always smell my yarn. My kids think I'm nuts because I smell my yarn and my fiber. They do. They think I'm, mom, why are you smelling your yarn? Because I like the way yarn smells. Alrighty. So that was it for my yarn stash expansion this week. I know, it was kind of crazy. So my spinning, I didn't grab it, but I'm still working on the uh, Blueberry Smoothie by Greenwood Fiberworks. And then, like I said, I, um, 
I couldn't help it. I had to go pick out the Aurora Borealis from Unwind Yarn Company and I started working on that. And that one I am trying to spin very, very thin. And I'm putting an, a, a massive amount of twist into it because A, it's Polworth, so it's going to get puffy. And B, I want to um, uh, Navajo ply it again. I want to chain ply it. And in order to make sure it plies right, I like to put a lot of twist into it when I ply it. So to counteract that, to make sure it's not overspun when I ply it, I need to make sure it's a little on the overspun side when I spin the single. So that's my strategy on that one. But I have some stash expansions for my fiber this week too. So a few weeks ago, uh, Knit Pearl Girl was talking about a Buddhist nun who likes, who uses spinning for her meditation. But she also has an Etsy shop where she sells um, dye roving. And oh my gosh, it's amazing. So the shop is named uh, Wittershin Woolworks. And this is Rambouillet. Um, I don't know if she's got an actual color on it, but it reminds me of tarnished copper pennies. And I love that combination of the turquoise with the orange, but I guess you could also make a case that it's very desert. But to me, I just, I see tarnished copper pennies and I love it. So I've never spun Rambouillet before, so this will be my first time. Um, so this will be like really neat. Um, you know what? It almost reminds me of, um, like a richer, uh, old appliances by Highland Handmaids. I might take this with, I have some old appliances and s spin them as singles and then ply them together and see what I get. Cause I've never done like mixed like that before. So it might be interesting to see the results of that. So that is my one fiber stash expansion there. And then I hit a fiber D stash last week. I went a little nuts. So I no more, no more until Christmas. I can't because I'll get in trouble <laughs> if my husband only knew. So I was able to hit a D stash and I picked up into the world October color. It's the uh, Bodhi. So it's this beautiful turquoise, deep blue, and um, kind of uh, not quite chocolate brown, sandy brown, sandy tan. And um, this is going to be some pretty, pretty stuff, let me tell you. Um, I'm hoping I get into the next round. Whenever she gets a spot open in her fiber club, I am so there. Um, so that was that. So this is um, Merino. So I love Merino. It's one of my favorites to spin. Um, I love sh I love everything. I, the only one I haven't liked so far is straight up silk. Straight up silk hankies. I'm not a fan. But everything else I really I enjoy. Okay, so those are all my stash expansions for spinning. I do have some sewing to share. So, um, we'll start off. I joined a swap and it's my first swap yarn or otherwise. So, uh, it is a swap sponsored by girl cave bags, Rista 1313, otherwise known as Susan. And it's a swap that she set up coordinated from her board. And I received uh, last week on Wednesday, right before I was supposed to record my swap package. So I am going to show my goodies. My swap partner is um, Carrie. So I want to, she's in Oregon and this is so cute. So I never done this before. So we went back and forth and we talked and chit chatted and oh my God, I probably, let me tell you, I scored. I felt so bad because I was like, I'll just put a couple fat quarters and some goodies. No, she took care of me. Let me tell you. Okay, so first, um, she made me a needle case for my interchangeable needles. So I have a little needle case now for my interchangeable needles because I needed that. 
So that is awesome. So now that I showed you, I can put my needles in. Um, I have a notions case with a load of notions, which I have one of the little, um, measuring tools, a seam, this thing. I couldn't find my other one, so I actually had to pull it out because I was sewing this weekend, so I needed it. So I'm using it, so this is awesome. How handy could you get, right? So we both like coffee, so she sent some coffee. I've already had two of the three packets of coffee. I couldn't stop myself, so I wanted to try it. I've never had the Starbucks Avia. It's really good stuff. I like it better than the regular coffee at Starbucks, can believe it or not. Um, I got a little postcard from Oregon. Awesome. Um, these are little tags. Cute little, little gift tags. And there's a little sheep on the front. Isn't that cute? And E-I-E-I-O on the back. Old McDonald. Little bunnies. They're not quite Angora bunnies, but hey, what are you going to do, right? Um, she is an Oregon duck, so that is so awesome. By the way, the Oregon uniforms this year are awesome. Okay, I'm loving the helmets, guys. But she sent me some Oregon duck chocolate. <laughs> so chocolate, I like that. And, oh my gosh, see, she sent me fat quarters. So it's Oregon, the Pacific Northwest, kind of rainy. But this is happy rainy, so there's like umbrellas. And if you can... If you notice, it's the same line, but just different colors. So I've got some whimsy to my fat quarters. So I will be making some bags out of these, let me tell you. And they're nice and soft. So all that stuff I showed you fit in this one envelope. I don't know how she did it. It's amazing. She needs to give Carrie, you need to film yourself packing this stuff up because I... Yeah, that was pretty cool. So I was really thrilled last week. That was a great, great surprise. So um, I went and checked out a new SKU-C bag. Quilt shop that opened here in Fredericksburg two weeks ago. And I did pick up some fat quarters for myself. These are not the ones that I'm sending to carry for the swap. But um, I got dragonflies. And I'm going to use these to coordinate together. And then I already, I got two other ones, but I already made a bag out of them. So here it is. It's this blue, reminds me of the blue tile in um, Greece. I've never been to Greece, but if I could imagine blue tile in Greece, this is what it would look like. So it's just a simple pull string, drawstring bag. So... I ran out of bags, knitting bags, because I've got all these knitting projects, so I had to make some. And the first bag I made this weekend, I had my Halloween fabric that I never used. <laughs> so I cranked out this bag and the blue bag, and I have another bag that I made for um, somebody who liked the owls, so their owl bag will be coming on Saturday. You know who you are. Bags, 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 and more bags. So um, that is all I have, as if that wasn't enough, for this week. Um, remember, don't forget to vote. Voting will close on the 21st, probably right around 3. Don't forget to sign up for the AF3 Charity Sock Yarn Club uh, lottery. So I will be pulling those um after midnight on the 21st and sending out emails to all the folks that are in. Um, if you would like to test knit and if you need some fast, quick and easy projects for uh, Christmas gifts, this one you can do and then if, you, if you're faster than me knitting, which you probably are, let's be honest, um, you can crank this one out in an afternoon. The other one that I did, the one I showed you last week, that took me like three hours to do. So this one, this one probably took me about six. So send me an email, uh, shoot me a plurk, and um, I'll get you the pattern to test it. And I would really appreciate it if you wanted to. So that is all I have. Oh my goodness. 
it was a lot, but thank you for sticking in with me. So um, have a great week. I will see you next week uh, right before uh, Turkey Gobble Day. I will be doing a turkey trot on Thursday. So um, we'll have to see how I'm feeling after that one. Oh, my goodness. So have a great week getting ready for whatever it is you have to do. So bye. Yeah.